everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Cursed City Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting Captain Imelda Braskov. This is a really cool miniature. I think it's my favourite of the hero set, and it's just really kind of, well, it's a devout of Sigmar. It's got Sigmar iconography on her, so she's already one of my favourites. Stormcast for life. So, without further ado, we're going to get into painting her. She's been primed with grace here, and the first place we're going to work on is all of her silver armour, as it's the most prominent feature. Now the colour we're going to be using first is Iron Hand Steel. I've got some thin down on my palette here with a bit of water. I'm just going to start painting this all over the top of all of our silver armour plates. Just like this. Now it might take a couple of coats to get it nice and smooth and consistent across all of the armour panels. But we want to start from this nice bright base. With that iron hand steel applied to all of her armour, what we're now going to do, as I should point out, we've also done the sword, it's going to make a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part black templar mix. And we're going to use this to shade all of that silver. We want it nice and runny here. And you just want to very carefully put this all over her armour. And so with that done, you should now have some beautifully shaded armour and sword. So what we're going to do is going to once again take some iron hand steel. And this time, we're going to be a lot more controlled with how we apply it. So what we want to do is we just want to effectively re-layer our armour panels like this just avoiding where the shade has settled. What we also don't want to do is we just want to pick up the ed edges, you see here, just leaving that Black Templar nestling in there nicely. And then similarly, on this little edge here, that a little, little highlight, like that. So you just want to go over all of her armour like this, making sure it gets nice and shiny once again. And then we'll come back. And so with that done, what we then want to do is take some Stormhost Silver. We want to use this to highlight the hard edges on our sword and armour. So with that done, you should now have some beautifully shaded and shiny silver armour and sword blade. It looks awesome. So what we're going to do now it's going to move on and we're going to paint in the cloak. So the cloak and the inside of the tabard here are the same colour but the outside is white. So what we want to do is we want to use some Talisar blue and we're going to use this on the outside and the inside of the tabard. We just want to get a nice smooth coat of this here by using these big broad brush strokes. with the Talisar blue. Just being really careful around all that armor. And so with that Talisar blue all applied, you should have an Imelda Braskov that looks something like this. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna darken down that uh, cloak but we're also going to start work on our black. And the colour that we're going to be using is Ultramarine's Blue. So firstly, what we want to do is we want to pick out all of our black details with this. This is going to include areas like the gloves, 
the boots and her trousers. Just like this. Just make sure that we finish off this section. Like so. And as I say, we're also going to be going over the top of our cloak with this Ultramarines Blue as well. It's much the same as we did before. Just want to make contact and then just pull it down. A lovely smooth finish. So with that done, you should have some cloth that looks like this, as well as the black that looks, should be looking like that. So what we are going to do is we are just going to quickly, before we do any highlights on the on the blue, we are just going to colour in that black detail. And so the colour we're going to be using is. Black Templar. I'm just going to be using this all over the top of the areas that we want to be black. So this is going to be the boots, the straps, and the gloves. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Latoc blue. We're going to use this to highlight our blue cloaks. So with that done, what we then want to do is we're going to take some Hoeth blue. We want to add this as a little spot highlight over the top of where we've just done that. So for example here. Just to give it the impression of the light catching off of that little area. Like so. You just want to go over the blue cloaks like this, and then we'll come back. And with that done, what we're then going to do is highlight our black details. And the colour we're going to be using for that is rust grey. And then next up, we want to use a tiny amount of Fenrisian Grey. A little spot of highlight. So with that black done, what we're now going to do is going to use some Apothecary White. I'm going to use this on the front of a tabard. And with that, then what we then want to do is we're going to take some Corax White. We want to use this to effectively relayer the cloak. But just avoiding any of the deepest areas. Where the Apothecary White has settled. So with that done, what we're now going to do, we're going to move on. I'm going to paint the brown details. And this is going to include the big eagle hair, feather, fur, coat, but also this little pouch here down on her leg. And the colour we're going to be using for this is wildwood. And it's very, very simple. We just want to take the wildwood and start chucking it all over the top of these details. Just like this. Really make sure that you work it in. And 
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Karak stone. I'm going to use this to highlight our eagle feathers. Just like this. You don't need to do all of them, just enough that you get that kind of distinction between the darker and the light. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some skeleton horn. I'm going to use this in two places. Firstly, I'm going to use it on this kind of connecting part of the beak. So just there. Like that. What we're also going to do is going to use it on our hair because we've got it open, we might as well. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use two colours. We're going to use contrast medium and the silicon and grey, and this is going to be for the actual beak. But what we want to do is we want to take some the silicon and grey on our brush, just like this, this kind of amount, maybe a little bit less than that, and just round the tip of the beak, just want to add this basilicanum grey about halfway up like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush, grab some contrast medium, and just pull that basilicanum grey up. Like so. You can always give that brush a wash. Just grab a little bit more basilicanum grey. Not very much at all. Just add a little bit more towards the bottom. Like so. So with that done, what we then want to do is we want to take some Corax white and highlight the beak. Just like that. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Screaming Skull. I'm going to do it to use it to do a number of different things. So firstly, we're going to use it to highlight all of her hair strands, just like that. We're also going to highlight the beak connecting part, like this. We want to colour in the eye. Just like so. And we also want to add a few spot highlights in the feathers. Not very many. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Griff Hound Orange. I'm going to use this on the eyes. Just like that. And with that done, we then take some Black Templar and we'll draw in the pupil of the eye. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Blood Angels Red. We're going to use this for a couple of different areas. We're going to use this firstly for this little piece of cloth that's tied around her arm. We're also going to use it for the soft grips of her weapons.
just like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thin down Retributor armor. We're going to use this to paint in all of her gold details. It's going to be areas like the hilt of her sword. This little twin tail comet here. The edging around it. Basically anywhere else that you want to be gold. If you're not sure, just check out the box art. And so with that Retributor armor applied, what we're now going to do is going to shade it. I'm going to use some Fire Slayer flesh for this. And so with that done, just before we highlight our gold and our red, what we're going to do is we are just going to finish off our base coats and the colour that we're going to be using is Gilman Flesh and this is just for her skin. Now we don't want to use loads of, our, of Gilman Flesh on the brush. We want her to be reasonably pale. So one brush load ought to do it. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to finish off the highlights in reverse order. Starting with the face, then the gold, and then the red. And then we'll be nearly done. So, the colour we're going to be using first is Flayed One Flesh. We're going to be using this, as I say, all over her face. So, rather than just picking out the sharpest details, what we want to do is we want to effectively, wherever the shade has settled, or rather, wherever that Gilliman Flesh has settled, we just want to avoid it. We want to effectively relayer the skin to make it nice and pale. Now I like to start by just picking out all the raised edges so that I know where I'm going. and then blocking it in afterwards. And with that done, what we then want to do is take some pallid witch flesh. And we use this to pick out the sharpest details on her face. So areas like the tip of her nose, the bridge of her nose, her eyebrows, the cheekbones, just like that. And with that done, what we then want to do is take a small amount of Fire Slayer Flesh, a really tiny amount. We want to use this to effectively add a little bit of colour back in around underneath the eyes, around the nose, and around the cheeks. And then what we want to do is take a tiny, tiny amount of wildwood. We want to put this just around the eyes. And next up, we then want to use a tiny amount of Screaming Skull. This is to colour in the whites of her eyes. Just like that. And next up, we then want to take a really ditty amount of Black Templar. I want to add this as the pupil.
Remember that done, our face is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the gold. And the colour we're going to be using for that is Liberator Gold. And next up, we're going to highlight those red details with some Wild Rider Red. And so with that done, all that's left to do is to paint that gem on her necklace. And the colour we're going to use first for that is Stormhost Silver. We just want to put this all over the top. Just like that. I mean, that Stormhose Silver applied, but we then want to do is take some Talisar Blue. We want to put this all over the top. So with that done, you should have this beautifully shiny, vibrant blue gem. So what we want to do is we just want to, just to finish it off, take a tiny, tiny amount of black template and just on the top part where there should be some shadow, just want to add a little bit of this black template, like that. So the Talisar blue over the Stormhost silver really just kind of pops underneath that bottom edge. And so with that done, Captain Imelda Braskov is now painted. All that's left to do is her base. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by painting in that rock. And the colour we're going to be using for that is Basilicanum Grey. So with that applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to colour in the rest of the base. Now, we're going to be doing something slightly different here because we want to have a slightly fancier base for, for this cursed city set. And so what we've got is we've got a pot of Astra Granite Debris. We've got a little bag of Static Flock. And we've got a tub of Modelling Gravel. Now, these are all available from various different places. And for example, this... Static Flock is from the Armour Army Painter. This is actually a very old tub of Games Workshop modelling gravel. It's very, very old. It's about 10, 12 years old. That you can tell because I don't like basing. <laughs> I never used it. So, uh, but you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. For example, you can get stuff from places like War World Gaming or any of your favourite producers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Astro Granite Debris first to act as our kind of base for all of those extra uh, basing materials. And then once we, whilst it's still drying, we're then gonna sprinkle some of it on. So we're just gonna get this Astro Granite Debris on there first, just in all that negative space like this. I don't want a particularly thick coat here. I'm just laying the groundwork with the Astro Granite Debris. Kind of like that. We'll do the rest of it in just a second, but then we put our texture spreader to one side. And what we do is just grab some tweezers. I'm just going to go into the gravel, grab up a tweezer full, and then just drop it in. You can just use your fingers. If you want to, 
obviously use your texture spreader just to move it where you don't where you do want it if you don't want it where it's landed similarly for the texture static grass again just a tweezer full and that's all around I'm just going to drop it in like that and then once again you can just use the texture spreader just to move it around if again it's landed somewhere that you don't want. So with that now dry, what we want to do is we want to use some basilicanum grey to just darken down all that astro granite debris and those gravel pieces that we've added. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to give our entire base a dry brush of Tyrant Skull. Just going over the top of that astro granite debris, all that gravel, as well as that sculpted detail, that rock that she's standing on. Or a bit of ruin, I should say. Just ties the whole thing together. So with that done, all that's left to do is the rim of the base and the colour I'm going to be using is some thinned down corpus black. But of course, you can do this any colour that you like. And with the base all finished, Captain Imelda Braskov is now ready for Ulfan Khan to lead the heroes into those cursed depths. I'm going to stop making cursed city jokes because they're really, really bad. I do apologise, but this was a lot of fun to do. I really, really enjoy painting silver now after having done the Argent Shroud. So if you want to see that video, you can check that out here on the on the channel. Um, and she's a, just a brilliant character. I really, really love this model. I can't tell you why, I just do. It's brilliant. I just love how it just, it's so Sigma, you know? <laughs> and I love Sigma. Everyone knows I love Sigma. Hallowed Knights fans, where are you? Show yourselves down in the comments. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.